Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. In this tutorial, let us go through virtual memory. So, what is virtual memory? Guys, we have already discussed this in, uh, I think, in logical and switching theory. Also, we have discussed and in also MPI also we have discussed, guys. So, basically, what is virtual memory? The first question everyone will be asking: Does virtual memory really exist? So, basically, virtual memory really it doesn't exist. But the concept of virtual memory is available in the devices which we use even nowadays fine in all the devices that we use we are having it guys okay so basically it appears to be present but actually it doesn't exist the virtual memory so it gives illusion to the users fine so what so if you ask me that why why we are thinking that it exists or not so basically let us assume you are playing a game like gta 5 or any high-end games so there will be almost 20 to 30 GB, almost GTA 5 minutes, it is almost 50 GB, it crossed the 50 GB, the PC version, fine. So your RAM will be 88 GB or 16 GB, but the game which you are playing which is of size 50 GB. So everyone will be thinking that how can this 50 GB file is running on such a small physical memory or main memory. So everyone will be having that doubt, right? So the, with the help of this virtual memory, we will be able to doing that guys so basically the virtual memory will be helping us so basically this whole thing will be divided into parts and among that few parts will be stored in your main memory with which you can access them and we can use the use them from your secondary drive so that is the main concept of virtual memory so with the help of virtual memory a programmer can write a program which requires more space than the capability of your main memory that's what i, I gave you a small game example here it's a programmer so such a program is executed by the help of virtual memory techniques fine in this method we keep only a part of process yeah that's what i that was i was saying in the main memory and other parts are stored in the disk that is nothing but your secondary memory and you will be accessing them and you'll be using them guys so i hope everyone got a small idea on that okay so now let us go through a few advantages only a part of the program needs to be in the memory for execution this is one of the most important advantage of virtual memory in any subject the virtual memory concepts will be the same guys fine okay so now logical address space is much larger than physical address space because we are having virtual concept right so that's the reason why it is very large and allows add spaces to share the several resources so we can address spaces guys this is nothing but address spaces to share the share the several processes more programs running concurrently so we can even run concurrently many programs because it, it has a very large size so we can use it for our extents so less input output needed to load or swap processes so there is no need of swapping right so if you are having unlimited space then why you need to swap okay so user advantage programmers or developers now need to worry about the storages so if there is a programmer who is designing a game or anything so he cannot he there is no need for him to think about this memory and everything he can design the high-end games however he wants however he wish so that's the main advantage for user for programmers and what is the advantage for system it is nothing but there will be less chances of external fragmentation guys because there will be always substitution right so even though we'll be having contiguous memory spaces, sorry, non-contiguous memory spaces, there exist non-contiguous memory spaces, but this problem will be reduced. So I hope everyone got a small idea on this. So in the next tutorial, we'll be going through demand paging. Thank you. Thanks for watching.